My name is Fa Lei, and I am a volunteer with an organization called Honor Flight San Diego. I want to tell you a little bit about Honor Flight San Diego, our mission, and why we're here today. Honor Flight San Diego was established in 2010 as uh, an organization to take World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. for a tour of honor. And the reason why was that the World War II Memorial had just been constructed in the early 2000s. But by the time the construction was completed, most of the veterans had already passed away. The ones that were left were too old to be able to make the trip by themselves. So this organization was formed all over the country, part of the Honor Flight Network to take the veterans to Washington, D.C. so they can see the memorial that was constructed to thank them for their service and sacrifice. The hub here in San Diego was established in 2010, and since then we've been able to take over 1,600 veterans to Washington, D.C. We started with World War II veterans, but now we have uh, branched out to Korea War veterans and now Vietnam War veterans. What makes this flight special is that we will be taking 95 Vietnam War veterans who have earned Purple Hearts or Bronze Star for their service. When they returned from Vietnam after their time of service, none of them were thanked for their service and sacrifice. So this is our chance as a community to come to the airport when they land on Sunday at one o'clock to display our gratitude for their service and sacrifice. These veterans are now in their 80s. Many of them have led very ordinary lives since then, but we want to give them our gratitude for their extraordinary time of service during the Vietnam War. During this trip, we will take them from San Diego Airport to Washington, D.C. And on Saturday, we will tour all the monuments that have been dedicated to the con major conflicts of uh, the 20th century. And after that, we give them a reception and we bring them safely home to San Diego. When they land, I would love to have the community come out and pay your gratitude to these heroes in the Vietnam War. The funding for the trips have been all donated uh, funds. Uh, there is no public money used. All the volunteers uh, are complete volunteers. No one gets paid. And in order to go on the trip, we actually have to pay to volunteer. Um, our veterans pay nothing. And we take them on a three-day trip to Washington, D.C. All expenses paid uh, on what we call a tour of honor. Uh, and we leave early on Friday mornings and come back uh, Sunday afternoons um, with a, a, plane, uh, a charter plane full of veterans and volunteers. So I'd like you to all meet uh, one of our veterans uh, here today uh, in studio, and uh, he is actually my vet veteran, so I am supposed to be his guardian, although he doesn't need much guarding. Uh, <laughs> if I can have you introduce yourself, Mr. Brewer. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Robert Brewer is my name. I live here in San Diego uh, in the Bankers Hill area, and I've been in San Diego since approximately 1981. And uh, Mr. Brewer, it's, uh, it's great to finally meet you in person. We had talked uh, yes. on the phone uh, and we're, I'm very excited to take this trip with you. Can you tell uh, us about your uh, service record uh, in Vietnam, uh, how you uh, came into the war, where you were and what you did in Vietnam? Sure. Um, I was commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Army in June of 1968 when I graduated from college. Uh, went to Fort Benning, uh, went through airborne school, ranger school, and some other training, then went to Germany for a year, and then received orders to Vietnam. I arrived in country in April of 1970, and six days after I arrived, 
I was helicoptered into Cambodia to join my unit, which was the Vietnamese Airborne Division. And I remained with them in Cambodia, and I was promoted to captain while, when I was there. But we, we came out of Cambodia on the 30th of June, 1970. I was an advisor to a Vietnamese company and then a, an assistant advisor to the battalion. And I was with this one company the entire time uh, we were in Cambodia. Came out of Cambodia, went to a fire base uh, in the Dog's Head area of Three Corps near Tay Ninh City and stayed there for another month and then went into different missions uh, in that general area. So I was with the Vietnamese Airborne Division for approximately seven months. And then I was reassigned to a super secret uh, organization called Max SOG. And we were headquartered in downtown Saigon. But I made several trips to what we call launch sites up in the I Corps, II Corps, and III Corps area. And then I was with uh, Max SOG until July of 1971. And in, in July of 1971, a uh, day I remember very vividly, I flew out of Tansanut uh, Air Base to Hawaii and then home. Wow. And when you arrived home, um, how were you received um, by your family or by the community? Uh, by my family, wonderfully. Uh, by uh, America, not so well. Uh, I think I told you this and I will relate to it, and I relate it to anyone who ever wants to listen. Um, it was a very difficult time in the United States in 1971. The war was extremely unpopular. And when I arrived back at Travis Air Force Base, of course, you, when the plane lands after being in a war zone for 13, 14 months, um, you just are incredibly happy and pleased and euphoric. You just you, you never thought you'd get back with what things you saw and then you're back and the plane went over uh, and it's, I'll never forget it. It was a plane. Uh, we had all ranks on the plane. We had we had colonels and we had privates and um, this Sar Master Sergeant E-8 walks onto the plane and he says, welcome back to the world. And of course, everybody's high fiving and happy and cheering and then he pointed his finger at us and he said, now listen up. And um, he got everybody's attention pretty quick. And he said, if you are transferring out of San Francisco International Airport and flying commercial home, do not wear your uniform. And, and you know, it was just, just a shock. I mean, we knew the war was unpopular, but we hadn't been in the country for over a year. And he said, and he repeated it. He said, do not wear your uniform. He said, because you do not deserve what people will say or what they will do. And so I followed what he said. I went to, a, we all went to restrooms in the, in, at the Air Force Base, changed into civilian clothes from my uniform, which of course I had on. And then I flew home and um, I never will forget my mother. When she greeted me, she said, why aren't you in your uniform? And I said, I was told not to wear it. And that's a, that's a, that was tough. Yeah, that's an unfortunate part of our, of America's history and how we received our mm -hmm. um, men and women in service from Vietnam. I, I'm glad that that has changed. <laughs> oh, it, it has, it, you are not alone. It has changed greatly. And uh, of course, our involvement in uh, the Middle East and now you visit airports and you see uh, soldiers in fatigues and all kinds of uniforms and you see people walk up and say thank you for your service mm -hmm. and that's the way it should be but you know I've studied the Vietnam War um, and and we can get into this if you'd like but but the, the American position on the war was influenced by four events would you like me to tell you what I think they were Sure. <laughs> Quickly. Yeah. The Tet Offensive, mm -hmm. the My Lai Massacre, um, the incursion into Cambodia, and the Pentagon Papers. Those four things, the American people believed they were being lied to, and they turned against the war, and unfortunately they turned against us who served. And it's a sad, it was, it was very sad. Yeah. But, it, but 
<laughs> what we're going to be doing this weekend is wonderful. Yeah, it will be. Um, so when you, after you got home, uh, what did you do with your life after that? Well, I had another year to serve, and I served at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and I was a captain, and then um, I had to resign my commission because I was a regular Army officer, uh, and I resigned my commission in July of 1972, and I came back to San Diego because I had some medical issues, but I, I came back to San Diego to law school, and I went to the University of San Diego School of Law, graduated in 1975, and then went up to Los Angeles, where I was a deputy district attorney for two years, two and a half years. And then I was an assistant U.S. attorney for another four and a half years. Came back to San Diego in 1982 and have been here ever since. Wow. 81, late 81, 82. And you and, still practice law now, Yes, correct? yes. Uh, you want me to walk through that career quickly? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> no, I've been a practicing lawyer. Uh, I was, I've been with a couple of firms here in San Diego. Uh, and then in uh, 2018, 19, I had the honor of being appointed by President Trump to be the U.S. Attorney here in San Diego. I served until uh, 2021, and now I'm still practicing. I'm of counsel with the firm of Seltzer Kaplan here in San Diego. And um, I also, uh, you had also, also touched on the fact that you've been back to Vietnam yes. a few times uh, yes. as a tourist uh, yes. since. Um, can you tell us about that experience too, sir? Absolutely. Um, I, I w always wanted to go back. Um, the relationship I had with the Vietnamese uh, when I was with the Vietnamese Airborne Division was wonderful. I met some of the officers' families, and it, it just was a great experience. I was never really with Americans other than with Max Sog, but I was also with the Vietnamese a lot then. And so I always wanted to go back. Um, Vietnam holds a very special place in, in, in my life. And so in 1996, I went back and um, visited for two weeks with three other gentlemen. None of them had been in, in the war, but they were students of the war. And so they invited me to go with them and to act as their guide. So we went uh, started in Saigon. We, I took them out to Ku Chi, took them out to Tainan City, took them into areas where, where I was serving. And then we went up to Hue, and then we went up to um, Hanoi and spent three days in Hanoi and went to ha, ha Long Bay. So it was a great trip. And, um, and then when I, and then the next year was not a good year because that, that's when I was diagnosed with Agent Orange related non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I went through nine months of chemotherapy and radiation. And I, but I was always telling my wife, you know, we, I'd love you to go back and see what I saw in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't quickly, obviously, because of my illness, but we did in 2006, 10 years or eight years, nine years later. And we spent two weeks in uh, visiting from Hanoi. We went down from the north to the south, Hanoi, and then, and then uh, ended up in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City now. And then we went from there to uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. But mm -hmm. we had 13 wonderful days in, in Vietnam. And the change from 96 to 2006 mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. The building, the factories, and, and, and it, but it was, a, it was so great to walk around the cities and see happy people. And, and it wasn't that way back in 1971, 70. Yeah. And you, you said that you had also served um, the Vietnamese refugees at Camp Pendleton yes. during the tent cities yes. uh, of 75. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, I was a, a third year law student. And of course, um, during the three years I was in law school, of course, I followed everything that was going on in Vietnam. And, and then they had the peace treaty and then they had the release of the prisoners and I watched I remember watching that on TV every day when they when they would land, because I wore a bracelet of, of one of them, and I remember seeing him on TV. It was very emotional. And and then the refugees uh, came in 1975, and of course Camp Pendleton. They, I don't know how many thousands were there, 25, 30,000, something like that, a lot. And I went up there uh, and volunteered to uh, serve meals. Uh, and of course, I was always hoping I would see someone I 
serve with, but I didn't. But I met a, just a bunch of wonderfully, uh, uh, wonderfully happy people who were, who were filled with gratitude about what the United States was, was doing for them, even though they were living in tents. But, but it, was, it was very uh, emotional, uh, but it, I was so proud to do that. But because I wasn't employed, you know, I really couldn't uh, sponsor anyone and, and I didn't have a job. So uh, it was just mostly going up there because it was only uh, an hour's drive to serve meals. And I remember serving the children with ice cream and, and, and it was just, it was, uh, it was very meaningful. Well, I'm, I'm sure the, the people who uh, you served up there were very grateful. And actually, my in-laws were in that ca that camp. Really? Yeah. Wow. And they moved from there up to Orange County, where mm -hmm. they still live now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just to wrap it up, what, what are your um, what are you looking forward to on this trip? What what, what do you anticipate? Well, it's going to be uh, interesting and emotional and um, I'm anticipating meeting a lot of other veterans, which which I, I really look forward to. Meeting you when you called and and uh, introduced yourself was great. And then, believe it or not, I was at a function on this past Saturday night. I'm sitting at a table, and um, my wife said, "Well, my husband's going on on this honor flight next weekend." Two people away uh, says is this the Vietnam honor flight? And, and she said, yes. And he said, well, I'm going too. I'm a guide. <laughs> and and, it, and it's, it's the police chief for Palomar College Police Department, Chief Moore. And I met him and he's sitting at the That's same great. table and, <laughs> and he's going back this weekend with us. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that, <laughs> that was so ironic and, and uh, pleasant to meet him. So I already know two people who are gonna be on the plane. <laughs> That's other great. than me you <laughs> anyway it's going to be wonderful uh to see these monuments um uh i've been to many of them because because of course i've been to dc i never went to dc without going to the wall because i have many friends on whose names are on the wall but um but to go with veterans it's going to be very meaningful yeah i i, I this will be my ninth trip Mm -hmm. uh, escorting the the veterans and uh, every trip has a magic of its own mm -hmm. so i just want to wrap this up and thank you for coming into the studio well, well i want to say i hope people who are listening understand that what you said in the beginning that this honor flight is is financed by contributions this is a charter flight um and and your your time and all the other guides time and all the people that organized it, that sent out emails, or uh, you know, got us together uh, online, all those people deserve a huge thank you. And it's a wonderful event, and um, I'm I'm I feel very honored to be on this on this trip. Wow, it, it's truly our privilege and honor to serve you and and to show you uh, a, a tour of honor, uh, and to show you the gratitude. Um, the Vietnamese people are grateful for all your service and sacrifice and all your friends, especially the ones that never came back. Mm -hmm. um, we never forget the Vietnamese uh, Americans uh, here in the States uh, commemorate every you know, April 30th, the fall of, of our country, mm -hmm. um, only to uh, celebrate the adoption of our new country. And we are patriotic. Vietnamese Americans mm -hmm. who are proud of where we came from and we never forget the service and sacrifice of the men and women that uh, gave us this freedom. So thank you and I look forward to spending more time with you. I believe this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to have a great time this weekend. You bet. All I'm right. looking thank forward you, to sir. it. Thank you, doctor, really, yeah. very much. Thank you for having me.